Was there a cover-up in the departure of President Omar al-Bashir? Did the AU strike a deal with South Africa to let President al-Bashir go unhindered? Did South Africa handle the al-Bashir matter well? Was the African Union summit a success? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tseidu. The recent African Union summit held in Johannesburg here in South Africa ended up more popular for the attendance of Sudan President Omar al-Bashir than its own agenda. Whereas the summit was convened for more serious business, it was President al-Bashir who stole the show. It is now history that whereas he was not supposed to leave South Africa as per an order of the North Houghton High Court, President al-Bashir safely landed in Darfur, Sudan on Monday. Amid the furore, the summit nevertheless continued with the business it was convened for. Yesterday, Question Time had an opportunity to talk to the African Union Commission Chairperson, Dr. Nkosa Zanazamine Zuma. Unfortunately, as a result, we won't be able to take your calls as that interview was pre-recorded yesterday. My guest was the African Union Commission Chairperson, Dr. Nkosazana Zuma. Chairperson, thank you very much for the time and welcome to Question Time. The summit was overshadowed by the circumstances uh, surrounding the presence of uh, the Sudan uh, President, uh, Omar al-Bashir. How did you feel about that? Well, I think the summit went very well. The objectives of the summit around the theme of women's empowerment was achieved. We had a very good discussion on the theme. We launched the campaign on the re removal of the hoe to the museum, modernizing agriculture so that women can work with modern equipment. And we introduced the scorecard, the gender scorecard, looking at various areas where countries are in terms of women's empowerment, whether it was women in parliament, women in cabinet, women who are able to open accounts, women who own their own companies, who, how long women take to go and fetch water. So a whole range of areas we looked at and there was a scorecard to show where, we, where each country is and, and gave awards for those countries that are doing well and encourage those that are not doing well. So that went very well. The second area that we wanted was the adoption of the 10-year plan of the Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. Mm. And that 10-year plan was adopted by the heads of state and now it's implementation. And we are working on a strategy to align the national plans to the 10-year plan and also a strategy to look at the capacity that we need to implement the different skills that are going to be needed. There was also a discussion about the budget because, as you know, our budget up to now has been mainly for the programs that had come from the donors. There was a dis good discussion among heads of state that we need to shift that now and over five years begin to take over the, 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 the resources that are needed for our budget and look at also how to mobilize alternate sources of funding for our programs, and that went very well. We also have established an AU foundation, which is going to raise money from um, private sector and so on, and we decided that we're going to use this summit to popularize it, and indeed it was popularized. There was a golf day, and there was a, tea, a gala dinner, and that went very well. And so generally, I would say the summit went very well. The ministers went on a retreat, the foreign ministers, and they discussed issues like 
the free movement of people and goods, how we are going to get that going uh, on the continent. And we agreed that we'll revisit this issue next year because countries must go and consult and make sure that when we meet again, we can set up time frames. And we looked at best practice. ECOWAS has already got an ECOWAS passport amongst the 15 countries. They are now looking at having a common ECOWAS identity. We looked at Rwanda. Rwanda has opened up. There is no African citizen now who needs a visa when, you, when they go to Rwanda. So all those things were discussed and we're going to revisit them next year. We looked at education because part of Agenda 2063, the young people said they want to be able to study anywhere and work anywhere. Okay. So all these things were, 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 were looked at and they were achieved. We had a very good session on violence uh, against women in terms of sexual violence and conflict and how we can work together to stop that. We had a session with uh, the UN Special Envoy on this. We had um, with Angelina Jolie, with uh, ourselves, with the Defense Force. So the summit went very well. Now coming to your introduction, which is Sudan is a member of the EU. It has always been. It, it will continue to be a member of the EU. And they attend all our summits. So I don't know what the fuss is about here. They attend all our summits. This, this was just another AU summit, nothing special. It's just that it was located in South Africa. And before any country takes on hosting of the summit, we have to sign a host agreement that makes sure that the AU rules and the AU requirements are met. And South Africa knew that one of meeting those requirements is allowing all members of the AU to attend the summit if they so wish at the heads of state level because summit means heads of state. Yeah. And so that's what happened. So I don't know what you guys are on about. What was your reaction? Were you happy with the way the South African government uh, handled the matter? Yes, I think they allowed President al-Bashir to come and attend the summit as it was required and he wanted to um, attend, he came. So I, beyond that, I didn't follow what was going on. All I wanted, I followed was that he wanted to come, he came. Okay. Given what um, the chaps and President uh, Robert Mugabe said uh, that there seemed to have been an agreement that um, South Africa will allow the president um, to leave. South Africa w will not have hosted the summit if they did not allow every head of state to come here freely okay. and leave here freely. They would not have hosted the summit because they would not have been allowed. Okay, with the developments then of the courts and uh, the I don't outcomes. know, I didn't follow that, so don't ask me about that. I really didn't follow that. So I, I don't. would you say that the African Union was not part to any deal to let the president live freely, as he had been allowed to come in? Every president was allowed to come in freely, because that's the requirement of the summit, including President of Sudan, all presidents were allowed and should be allowed to come in freely and live freely in an AU summit. This was not a bilateral meeting. This was an AU summit and it had to be run according to the AU rules, not according to South African law. Yes. That's all I'm going to say on this matter. Let's move on. Uh, perhaps finally, given the uh, what, what was said to have occurred in Sudan where your uh, uh, peace I don't know what occurred in Sudan, so I will not answer that because I do not know what occurred. Okay, if it has happened, would you I not be concerned? I don't know what occurred. I don't know what you are talking about. I don't know what occurred in Sudan. Is there a position from the African Union in as far as the ICC is concerned? 
we are not signatories of the ICC, so we are not part of it. Organizations, I think we should understand what the ICC is. ICC deals with member states, not with organizations. We are not part of the ICC. They have no jurisdiction over the AU. We have no jurisdiction over them. We are just not part of them. Okay. The AU is not part of the ICC at all. Okay. It's member states, individual member states are part of the ICC, not the AU as an organization. I'd like to take a quick break. When we return, let's look at some of the resolutions that were adopted at the summit uh, only after the break. This is question time. We're taking a quick break. Please don't go away. South Africa is the third leading country globally in TB infections. We have 9 million new cases occurring globally and 30% of those cases are, taken, are occurring in the African region. And there are two broad kinds of um, drug-resistant TB, so to speak. The one is MDR-TB and the other is XDR-TB. To ensure that everyone who's diagnosed with TB is tested for HIV. There's grossly inadequate funding yeah. for TB, right. vaccine, drug and diagnostic research. We need a lot more. Join me on Health Talk every Saturday morning between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. as we unpack current health stories. Welcome back. We are in conversation today with the African Union Commission Chairperson, Dr. Anko Sazana Laminzum. Ma'am, welcome back. Let's talk about trade among African countries. It has been raised that there seems to be a concern, um, which is actually real. Africans are not trading amongst uh, each other. Yes, that's true. The average, um, if you take the average of the continent, is only 12 percent of the trade that's amongst us as compared for instance to the EU which is about 60 percent so clearly we have a problem and even the global average is much higher and there are objective reasons for that one we have been discussing trade with other regions been endless uh, discussions with the EU, how to trade with them without discussing how to trade amongst ourselves. Um, what, we, what is there is these trade agreements in the RECs, but not at a continental level. But even the RECs, if you take West Africa, ECOWAS, East Africa, COMESA, and maybe SADC, if you only took those, the average would probably be around 20-something percent. Mm. But in the north and in Central Africa, there's hardly any trade going on there. And that's what, it's about 2% in one of the wrecks. So that's what brings the average down. But even the 20 is not enough. We still need to do more. And that's why we launched at this summit, which was a great achievement, we launched the negotiations for the continental free trade area. Mm. And those negotiations are now going to start in earnest. But they are starting with the foundation that has been laid by the signing of the agreement of the tripartite, what we call the tripartite, but that is SADC, COMESA countries, and the East African community. And that accounts for about 26 countries so they have already signed a free trade agreement uh, in Sharm El Sheikh just before the summit. So that's great news because that is going to lay a good foundation. And ECOWAS also has a free trade agreement amongst themselves. So that brings to 41 countries. So I think 
there is a good foundation for that. But also we need to look at areas that things that impede trade. One is the tariffs and that's what they're going to be talking about. But also the second one is non-tariff barriers and we need to address those very quickly. And where they have addressed those non-tariff barriers, we see in, East Afri in the East African community at, at goods that used to take 40 days or more from Mombasa to Kigali, now they take about six to seven days because they've removed all those non-tariff barriers. And that's what we need to do across the continent. And the second thing that we need to do, the third thing, tariffs, non-tariff barriers, is to improve our infrastructure mm. because goods have to move on highways, on railways, yes. on the air, sea. So we need to look at all the things that modes of transport and what needs to be improved. But we can have all the transport, but if we have visas, and goods are going to be moving from one place and there'll be visa requirements, all sorts of forms to be signed. So we need to discuss the free movement of people within the continent and free movement of goods so that all the things that slow down trade are liberated and so that we don't have all these constraints. So one of the discussions that we had, as I said earlier, with the foreign ministers was this issue of free movement of people. We're going to visit it next year and at some stage we'll also put it to the heads of state because it does need to be addressed quickly. And of course, the last issue that we'd like to discuss around trade is then you need to have something to trade. So we need to transform our economies because it's one thing trading raw materials amongst ourselves, but we need to trade manufactured goods. That's what creates jobs. That's what gives us revenue. And that's what will give us um, trading advantage amongst ourselves and with the world. So we need to look at it's not in isolation, it's just trade. That's why most countries have trade and industry, because industry is the part that transforms the economy, that manufactures what you can trade. Why are African states opening their markets to other non-African states, but not doing so amongst each, each other? Well, I think that's the legacy of colonialism, we have always looked up to Europe and the EU came as a benefactor and that's the agreements that we've been signing. But I think now heads of state and government and African people recognize mm -hmm. that really for us to move forward to prosperity, we need to trade amongst ourselves first and foremost, and then trade with the world. Because if you look at all regions of the world, none of them have their biggest tra trading partners in other continents. Mm. Their biggest trading partners are in their region, mm. but it's only Africa where our biggest trading partners are across the seas. And that's precisely what we want to correct because it's not sustainable it's not going to move us into shared prosperity that we are looking for. Let's talk about the role of women uh, in African development. Um, the theme um, was very loud. Are you happy that with a theme like that, you would be able to achieve this by 2063? Oh no, it's not achieving it by 2063. It's first 10 years, we have targets of what to achieve. Yes, I'm very happy because I think the theme just gave momentum to this. But it also 
put a baseline of where we are. 20 years ago, we went to Beijing, the whole world, yeah. and we agreed on what to do. We set up targets on the plan of action, but we had to now take stock of where we are and where we want to go. And so I'm very happy that this, this year's theme is giving that momentum. But it's very clear from our assessment that though progress has been made, it has been very slow and very patchy. Uh, in fact, it's estimated that if we go at the same pace as we have been going all along, it will take us another 80 plus years. So it will be beyond 2063. But we, are, we, we as women are saying that's not going to happen. We have to achieve what we need to achieve quicker. And I think if we do a number of things, we will be able to. One is education for girls and boys. Mm -hmm. And if we can give them education and then skill them so that they're just not generally educated, but they have specific skills that they can apply, and we put quite a lot of focus on the science, technology, engineering, maths, research, and innovation. I think that will also move us much faster. And of course, once women are educated, they'll be able to be drivers together with our young people drivers of our development. They'll be engineers, they'll be in the infrastructure, they'll be in the blue economy, they'll be everywhere. Because it just, it's just common sense that you can use half your talent and leave out more than half your talent and think that you can compete, you can reach your full potential. How? It's not possible. So. We need to improve agriculture. After education, it's agriculture. Because most of the women on our continent are still in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And that's why the emphasis was on modernizing agriculture. And also moving away from just being farmers, but to going towards agribusiness. So that's another area that we're looking at. OK. Perhaps finally, um, the question of funding. Uh, came up uh, very um, strongly and um, there are other people who are worried that if um, Africa continues to be funded from abroad those who fund it will call their agenda. That's true and that's why the decision is to move gradually towards taking over our funding especially of the organization because that's where policies and decisions are made but also we now need more investors than donors into the continent. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but uh, thank you very much for the time and all yeah, the best. Welcome. Hoping that uh, we will achieve this indeed before 2063. If the media assists us, we will. Thank you very much. Okay. That was question time for today. Have yourself a wonderful time. Goodbye.